Have you got your hand over the top of the lens there? No. How professional is this start? I think it's the shadow from the window. Anyway, hello, if there's anybody there. <laughs> Fancy it's seamless, off your isn't it? Woman at the very oh, beginning. gosh, she's singing us about it. If I don't, if I, if I mess with it. Hello, good evening, and welcome again. So it's isolation inspiration number two, or ISO Inc, as the cool kid Debbie Durrance calls it. I think that should be what we call it. So, um, and Debbie's in the house. Hello, hey, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie Durrance. Debbie Durrance. Yep. Fabulous. And I'll tell you who else is going to be joining us is Diane, the watercolour meister. We've got, we've got like, you know, um, parchment meister and Lisa. We've got generally just brilliant meisters like Tracy and Sharon and Pamela and Angela. Is this just, we've got just a mega team. And Maria. Oh yeah. The silent camera woman. Yeah. Anyway, so what we're going to do, crack on, because what we're going to do again is um, do this every week. We're going to do something that you want to see by request, or just that I want to play with. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to lie here. I'm going to tell you as it is. I'm going to colour this in for the first time with you. Because I ta because this one here, this is the, um, the blossom from the... Uh, oh, it wasn't Garden of Treasures. It's the... Um, sketchbook sheena sketchbook garden garden sketchbook is what we call it honestly you know what drawing the pictures is easy doing their names and remembering them is the challenge so um but i've also got this one stamped out as well this is not oh it's on the floor i'll get it later the one with the little bird basically here's the thing use whatever floral stamps you've got blossom stamps you know blossom stamps secure they're all popular so what you've got it's going to work all right so it's about the pencils and the technique so this was from the that's the drawing in the sketchbook with the other stuff that was in the sketchbook that's the original one but yeah i'm going to color this in at some point as well yeah that would be nice i just have to remember if i used a water-based ink or a or a water resistant permanent ink i'll soon know because all the flowers will be shades of gray if it's not a water resistant ink oh this could be fun uh would not be wonderful but i'm not going to do that in a minute we're going to do one together as you can and now what i've got is this stamp which is still pretty sizable and i've got it on my stamping platform my uh, little independent stamping platform i've got to say stamping platforms i have just seen the light um like i said before i don't tend to rush into trends i'm a bit of a traditionalist you know if it isn't broken don't fix it so i held back with stamping platforms thought I can stamp, yeah. It's working. So I didn't really try one for quite some time. And then when I did, I was like, wow. Phew, pleased I did because these make the job so much easier and so much better for a few reasons. The first one is sometimes when you stamp up, you can put too much pressure on your stamp and it can lead to not the clearest of image. Whereas if you can just ink up and put a fair amount of pressure on without virtually jumping on it, you will, and then re-ink it if you've missed some bits, you've got the best of everything. See, I want that a little bit darker. Now what I'm doing, this is on the Willow watercolour card, any watercolour card you've got, any good, if you've got the Willow white card, if you've got any good quality stamping and colouring card, mixed media card, anything that is good like that that works well with water-based products it's all good in the hood so i'm gonna just continue stamping i have to say normally i don't drink much coffee but i've had two today i'm on my second so just be warned mm -hmm. yeah maria knows all about that um yeah so a little bit of you know more caffeine than usual might be a little bit more talky talkerson like Adele, talky the toaster from Red Dwarf. Have to say reference if you haven't seen it, you gotta look at it. Brilliant. We're like living parallel lives, music wise, TV wise, uh, Adele and I. So I've stamped this blossom out here and I've used a um, antique linen. <clears throat> Anything like, if it's old papers, paler again. So you might not be able to see it, but that's cool and fine and dandy. And we can work with that. Everybody good? Everybody happy? Everybody's happy. Hi, Margaret. 
We've got friends in from America as well. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hope you're all keeping safe. We're all in this together. Isn't that just like sad that this is like united everybody in a kind of not a great way, but you know, we'll find the positives out of it because we are going to craft and have a look. Right? We've got friends in from France. We have a bonjour. Bonjour. Comment allez vous? Oh yeah, batter batter all level French now, won't we? Nervous. Mm. Je m'appelle. I about that much. And I know how to find me ruler on the table. <laughs> That's about it. So Faber Castell. Faber Castell, whatever which you want to pronounce it. The Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils. And these are the ones that arrived last week. As we were just before we did the um, the first in inspiration, and I was a bit excited about it, so I had to like try a little bit on Thursday when we did that little small coloring project. And a lot of you've been buying them and getting your or getting your pencils out. So this is um, you know you don't this pencils on something that you use once and go right done that move on. This is like the thing that you just use over and over again because you always need a good coloring product. And for me, every time, the current product of choice will be water-based something, rather than alcohol pen type colouring. Um, simple thing is, you can put a scribble on a piece of paper, add water, and you've got all the different, from darkest to lightest tone in there, shade, all right? So first thing, make yourself a, a colour chart like this, because I'm gonna have to refer to this, and I'll tell you why. Um, the blossom picture was from your mum and dad's front garden. Mm -hmm. And it, but it's white, right? So but fortunately, you had another blossom picture that was like cherry blossom and it's pink. So that's the first thing, make a color chart. That's what we need with anything you're using. Color chart is necessary. Next thing, you know what I sometimes do? I sometimes detach these lids, you know, because when you open them, you want to leave your pencils in the tin, but you don't want to, um, it's just, it's like a bit awkward, isn't it? The, the size of it. But we'll put it there. It looks lovely and it smells lovely. I know I'm not the only person that loves the smell of uh, watercolour pencils. Right, so let me look at me thing so it knows it's me. Right, so here's the next thing. When you've got your stamp, if you think, well, I can't remember where to start, what to, what to colour it, how do I do that? Uh, any way you want to do it is the answer. But if you want to be uh, a bit of guidance and, and make it a little bit more um, realistic and lifelike, what I would say is get... Um, get online and google look for a photo if you haven't got a photo of yourself of just the color of what you're gonna what you're gonna be um using that's all you want some reference for what color is that particular flower you know straight away i know that daffodils on purple so i'm onto a starter there but um we know the yellow but where does the light light hit the flower if you how light a yellow do you use how do you represent the dark yellow uh, how does the, the shadow fall on leaves? Where are the dark up areas on the leaves? How dark does it get? You can make it up and that's all great. You can do purple daffodils if you want. That's what we, that's why we create. But if you want some guidance, then look at a photo of what you're doing. So that's what I've got. This is another picture of Maria's here. This is um, obviously cherry blossom, very, very pink. I don't know if I'm gonna do it that pink. So what I need to do is look at my color chart and think which pink is going to be closer to this one here. Now, to be honest, this is going to be coming to play magenta because can you see how dark these areas are in here? See, look, if I put this here, can you see? Mm -hmm. You've absolutely got that in there. So that's what you're doing. Match it with your picture. Definitely got magenta, but that's too purpley. We need more of a pinky pink. And there is because we I did the limited palette. That's gonna that's too dirty. It's more kind of toned down. This dark red. This is clean and vibrant. So the, what I'm probably going to use is a mix of deep scarlet and magenta to get similar color to this. I won't get exactly. This is why you buy. There's you know red, blue, and yellow are your primary colors. But look at how many different blues there are here. Look at how many different yellows you've got. Look at all these reds. Technically, you can make all colors from three colors, but the when the actual primary colors, the basic building blocks, do vary. So that will affect the type of green you mix if you mix a, a blue and a yellow, and or the purple if you mix a, a red and a blue. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so cool. So we've got that 
there is my reference. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bit of scrap card and I'm going to just check that that's indeed what I'm looking at. So I'm going to take some of this magenta and you know what, if I make a little palette like this now anyway on a piece of scrap card, I'm going to come back to this because this will be um, if I want to actually just, you know, watercolour from there in a traditional fashion. And this one here, so I'm going to scribble that there, scribble that there. I'm going to have to sharpen this shortly. But you see, because we're not colouring in in a traditional fashion like a, a wax-based pencil where you really have to layer and layer and, and until you fill the grain of the card to get it smooth and blend and burnish. With this, we just really, it's a, me, it's a means of putting a bit of colour sort of where you want it to be and then use the brush to tell it where to where you do fin the finesse of the whole thing. Okay, so what two colours, what are they called? Um, I used here, I have got uh, magenta, that one there, and deep scarlet. Okay? All right. All right, I'm going to see how those two work for me. Um, right, next thing is, that's, I'm just going to leave that there for a sec. I may want to mask a couple of bits here, so I'm going to take my masking fluid, or drawing gum, whatever you want to call it, and what I really could do with is... I need a, I tell you what, I need a stylus. This is what I need, that. Because what I want to do is I want to dot some of these little white bits in here. And so by putting these on like this, it means when I colour in, hopefully I'll have some little white bits of, um, or yeah, white bits of card, so that it actually um, protects that area and then I can, so you're kind of planning ahead in your head. What you what do you want to achieve? I want to have some lighter bits here, but I don't want to. You can't paint around dots this size. You can try, but I don't want to be around you when you when you've done it. No. So um, and you know, bearing in mind where I kind of isolated, I bet your partner would thank me for it too. So dot it on now, and this will then. Um, enable you to go around and just wash over these areas with colour and then it will be protected and you want bigger and smaller dots can you see the way I'm really um, loading this stylus with some and then doing some little dots so that it every time you dot it gets a bit smaller and that's what makes it interesting it's, kind of, it's a folk arty type um, technique as well for um, you know if you, you saw me with paint fusion making some um, edges and things with just dotting like this so it works the same with the stylus and a little bit of have i got anything there yep yeah, i think i've got everything oh maybe a little couple there um i think i've got enough there right we're good so that needs to dry so i'm going to dry it as quickly as i can with my heat gun hope it's plugged in Oh, they like when I do the shows and I forget sometimes and the poor floor manager has to crawl underneath the counter and plug it in. It's like, oh, my like. Right, so I'm going to... thing is, if you're drying this, just be really... Uh, don't want to go too close to it. And I'll tell you what, this is... Because this is um, raised, it's going to take longer to dry. You know, it's domed. If, you, if I painted it on flat, this would be good to go really quickly mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to show you everything in real time and work through it together and and I'm working through this as I'm going as I said I haven't got one prepared but you didn't try and run it so you can have a blooming good laugh if it looks totally goes a bit peak tall but you know what that's what crafting and art is all about you win some you lose some it's just you play the averages don't you absolutely so um, I'm gonna dry this on the back the, the, the um, technique and the principles will all be there, right? But, you know, every, every piece being, you know, created from scratch, there's no guarantees. Let's have a little sip of coffee, sorry. Say hi to Betty. Hiya, Betty. Margaret. Katie. Yeah. Lots Hello, ladies. enjoying it. Ah, oh, fantastic. Tell you what I'm going to do while this is drying. Uh, why don't we do the background yeah so mm -hmm. back to the color chart and i'm thinking pink against that gorgeous blue sky looks amazing doesn't it i love the ultramarine that is gonna have to happen here Which so ultramarine? ultramarine this one here uh -huh, pretty isn't nice. it yeah. yeah i might even go with this oh here we go helio 
I can't even read my thingy. Helio! Oh. You know what? Well, it's a weird colour. Let me just film it. That one. Reddish. Helio blue reddish. Thank you. Yay. Maybe I've got the wrong glasses on. You know what? I wear very focals. Yes. Yeah, I know. I wear very focals, right? So I've got glasses for close up work when I'm drawing. So I thought I'd try these, but they're kind of like, I don't know if they're my mid focus ones or my, just, or my close focus ones. Oh, it's a pain in there. It might be even more abstract than we thought. Hey, we'll see. Right, so we'll get that one and we're going to use that helio bubbly thing. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I am going to take a little bit of colour here and there and I'm going to scribble like this in a lovely scribbly fashion, not right up to my flower. And now you can do a wet into wet, wet and wet um, technique here if you want, instead of doing this directly on the card. What I would say, notice how I'm holding the pencil right sideways, because then you get a larger area, surface area, and tend to get less pressure. And also, hold the pencil much further back on the pencil. If I used it, because I really want to ensure that I don't have any uh, lines like showing in the cord or etched into the cord. If you use a, this is where the better quality pencils come in. With the hard pencils that don't have a lot of pigment and more colour, because let's face it, they all can look great in the tin until you start to use them, you tend to have to press harder to get something on, transferred from the pencil to your project. So that then causes um, etching into your card. Mm -hmm. which you'll never get rid of it's not it's 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 just that's it you're done you've had it so um by using the better quality a they go further because you use less but the big thing is that you just get a, a much better more professional look with it as well um okay so we'll do that there let's let's try that now that's those two colors i'm going to take a big brush i'm going to use well the biggest from the standard set is the number 12 round brush because that I'm going to be able to um, control the colour. Now what I would say is start somewhere that you can kind of, it's easy to stop. Because wherever you start and stop, it's like painting a wall. You wouldn't start emulsion in a wall in the middle of the wall, would you? You start in a corner, even I know that. Maria's impressed, she's like, oh, I haven't seen that through practice. But anyway, that's, I know that, the theory. But, um, so you see where this little, uh, it's the stem is, the, the stalk, the branch. That's given me a little barrier there, so I can start going around here, and I don't have to worry about joining up. Make things easy for yourself. Just make it easy on yourself. So what I'm doing, is I'm now taking some water, and I'm wetting this, and I'm going just up to the petals. Now, watercolor tends to behave itself. It go, doesn't want to wick where the cords dry. So where it's wet is where it will splodge and move and do its thing, like this, see? We want to bring this out quite a bit. But if we go right up to those petals, it's, it's not going to misbehave as long as your card up to there isn't wet. If you wet it, then it'll go, thank you very much. I will just travel through there and, um, and, and I'll wick into that, almost like os osmosis. The passage of particles from a less concentrated solution to a more concentrated solution via a semi-permeable membrane. Good grief. <laughs> you know what? You know what? School, I had a really good biology teacher. He was brilliant. And um, so I listened. You know, I wasn't, I'm not exactly the scientist type, but certain things, because you have a good teacher, you remember, don't you? Mm. It doesn't make a difference. Absolutely. Give me Pythagoras theorem. No idea. Maths teacher, not the same. <laughs> give me times tables no I was saying to Maria you know when my mum was alive bless her I could have achieved world peace and all kinds of amazing things and my mum would still say yeah but you still don't know your times tables do you pet and I don't I was the kid that had to start with you know the two times then you go up great two twos is two four two four mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> point two yeah there you go from that point when we definitely got beyond three well onto threes fives that was good twos and fives if you got onto threes it would be because you had to make your mouth move or the teacher picked on you so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't good 
<laughs> Play to your strengths, eh? <laughs> Keep colouring. <laughs> Keep colouring. <laughs> Colour and talk, that's it. Colour and talk. So, can you see how this is going here? Yeah, a little bit. Cloudy, fluffy, pretty. And the thing is with watercolours, is you're always better off starting light and going dark. That's the way to that's the way to do it. Is um because you can you can add more, you can build it up, which we will be doing. We'll be drying areas and then adding more colour and doing that. Um and that's that's great. But lightening is another another kind of a challenge. Um so start yeah, light to dark with them. And also um, when they're wet even i mean when the, when the pencils are dry it looks like there's nothing there you think oh, i haven't put any color in there but if they're the good quality pencils i said you use that's fantastic because it's like those magic coloring books you know the ones you used to get that had nothing on the page and then you put the water on it was like whoa love that i love them as a kid so um that's why you get the the good quality ones now the, the, when they're all wet though when you see the actual watercolor activated like this what you're going to see is um, a darker version. It's going to dry lighter. They always dry lighter. Okay, so, yeah. Now, I wanted that little bit darker, and then it's going to look a bit weird because you've just got colour here, nothing on the petals. But bear with. Hopefully, it'll look better as we go. So that there is all good, and it's given my... And I've got a bit of variation around it, which is nice. And... Yeah, I'm not gonna not gonna overwork it or, or go too much because if you do, you can get what they call this cauliflower effect, where you put a wet bit in and it, then it creates like kind of a fluffy effect. A uh, little bit up here, I've got, but I don't mind because I want it to be cloudy anyway. Um, so yeah, that's all good. We'll dry that, and also this is where you use a, a good quality card, watercolor card. You know what? The clues are in the title. Brilliant for watercolors. <laughs> so we'll just dry this and then because the thing is if you don't dry this now and you go to colour your petals in your pink will wick into the blue and you're going to get purple edges and that's around wet it. on wet isn't it yeah then? absolutely because the wherever it's wet the card will wick the paper the colour into it so make sure this is dry now before we go any further I'll tell you what, respect to Angie Rogers. She's given me the high potter news. You're joking. The, the, yeah, whatever I See? call it. Wow. You just don't know who's watching. You just don't know Maria. You don't know. She you knows. don't know. You don't know. I mean, you can stand amongst it. I used to love sitting next to people like her at school. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah did, you swap, Ange. did you swap, like, your crisps at playtime for, yeah. like... Yeah. Yeah. Bad to yeah, I knew, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We also have Mandy Taylor in the house. Mandy Taylor in the house. Whoop, Mandy whoop. will be all prepped now, ready to go. Fabulous. Live last week, Mandy. Brilliant. Mandy's got a husband back home at oh, last yeah. as well. Good to hear Brilliant. that. Brilliant, yeah. Everybody's safe and well. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so that's what I've got there. And you can see it has dried lighter. Yeah? Mm. But not pretty diffused. Easy. Easy peasy. But we're not done. So what we need to do now is we'll put the blues back and we'll get our um, colours that we're going to work with. So it was magenta and it was this one here, which were my um, deep scarlet. Why fiddle dee dee. I've got to say hello to me. Benjamin Cooper. Benjamin in the house. Cooper in the house. Brilliant. Benjamin in Germany. So, right, so I'm going to do a little scribble here, a little scribble there. Now, I'm going to use this lighter colour more than the darker colour. Now, looking at the picture, if we look at the picture, you'll see how light, it's almost white. Now, if we want to retain that white, what we have to do is just basically not paint it. Can you see that bud there? It's shiny white, and then it goes to a bit darker pink, and then it's got that magenta colour on the side. Can you see? Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by looking at it first. More magenta here, very dark there. We might get a bit of grey and purple in there as well. A bit of blue in there to give it that darker shade. So always start with the lighter area. So what I'm going to do tend to be where the petals overlap, darker. Can you see? It's kind of like doubled up in intensity. So let's just 
wet this and see what this looks like. It's not going to be the exact pink, but that's a pretty pink. We can work with that. Okay, but look at this is how light we're going to have to go. Like that light in places. All right, and this is the magenta. Look, whoa. I'm doing Rocky Horror Picture Show in my head now. Yeah, magenta divine. <laughs> yeah, Tim Curry, though, legend in that role, Frank and Furter. It was good, wasn't it? Mm hmm. Hi, Adele. It's, it's the coffee, everybody. It's not my fault. <laughs> You're trying in, to bring it back to normal. In a, but... in a monologue, has <laughs> got no chance tonight. <laughs> hey, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, two of them, lovely. Found the recipe on um, on YouTube. It just popped, you know, this random stuff just pops up. And I thought, where's the link there? But everybody's making this coffee. And you make it with, it, the coffee floats on top of the milk. I'll try and remember the name of it and I'll tell you. But it's lovely. You just use instant coffee and you whip it up. And it's really nice, cold coffee, very nice. Okay, so, brilliant. Okay, am I talking too much? No, I'm fine. Okay, ahead. carry on. Right, so, we're gonna take this pink, and there's two ways to approach it. If you wanna be super careful, you can kind of, you can just go with this and use it like a watercolor palette. But I'm gonna just go for it here. Let's pop a little bit in here. I'm not gonna do the center, and now I mean a little bit, like hardly any. Sounded a bit scary then, and I scared myself then. I'm going to come in a little bit closer, but whilst I do, I just want to say, uh -huh. oh, Sandra's been chatting with her mum on FaceTime. Yeah. Mum is 98. What? Respect. Yeah. Good on you. My dad still doesn't know how to use the TV remote. Oh, he, he, no, he does not. Oh, this was so funny. She was telling me about last night. Oh, bearing in mind, <laughs> your dad's 86, 87, and just been in hospital, bless him. So really got to look after Colin. And, um, and Coral, 83. So now they've got Sky Q. Right, which is the brilliant, the love, and that's excellent, especially you know during lockdown. But they called last night. We need help, and it was me that oh, Coral was was requesting help of, knowing that I'm sad, like techie person with that. Everything that's on the telly, they're telling us what they're doing. So um, she now picks up a paintbrush and applies a uh, light pressure with a barely wet brush to the cord. You know when they've got the audio description on. Well, they put it on and they couldn't work out how to get it off. <laughs> so for like whole of lockdown for them, which is gonna be a while, bless them, because of the, their age, they were gonna bed. She said, yeah, we couldn't get it off last night, so we just went to bed. <laughs> and read a book. <laughs> and read a book. So fortunately, we did a bit of tech support over the phone for them and uh, managed to get the audio description switch off, which is a fabulous thing if you need it, but if you don't, <laughs> and then Coral's not great on here in any way. You know, so she needs to concentrate on what they are seeing without this extra bit of distraction going on. So can you see how what I'm doing here? This is only in a foot. I'm still using that huge brush. If you use a good quality brush, you really don't need to keep swapping brushes. It's everything I say about quality and what to. Well, there's a reason why. And you know what? I don't want to buy stuff by somebody just saying, "Well, just do it." I'm that like kid, but why? But why? But why? Um, tell me why, and then I and then I can then I'll understand. Now, what I want to do because I wet that. If I go into that now with a pencil, it would be really um, it would grab the pencil. So never put pencil onto wet cord unless you want that really dark line that is never going to move because that is what's going to happen. It won't blend and it won't disappear. So we've got that first petal done, which looks quite nice, and we haven't really got tons and tons of shading in it. Yeah. So this isn't just a swatch, this is a palette as well, isn't it? It is a palette it? indeed, Maria. That's exactly what it is. It's like, yeah, this isn't just any palette. This is the Faber-Castell palette. You know, the Marxist adverts. Yeah. References. Told you I didn't get out much before, so... Yeah. Maria okay. points to several shades of red on a card. <laughs> Maria rolls her eyes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maria's giving the stop talking sign. <laughs> She's not really. She's hey, used to it. Hey, Tracy, just say hi. Tracy's got her grandson, oh, Scott, bless. age six. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. He's colouring in a night. Oh, wow, brilliant. Nice one, Scott. That's cool. That's a cool thing to colour in. Definitely. Really cool. You know what? Thing is, Scott, um, now this is a bud in here, I'm sure. You, it, uh, you know what? The, if, you, if you're not sure, uh, you can make it, two things. Make it up or look at the original stamp or use a slightly darker ink. Yeah, make things easy for yourself again on that. So I'm going to go darker in there. Let's, let's shade those two and see what we've got. So look at what I'm doing. I'm putting the brush in my water and then, you know, making sure it's wet, but then make sure that you've got no water dripping on the ferrule bit, which is the bit that holds all the bristles in and dab most of the water off your brush. Then you've got the control you need to, to make it work. Because it, the, what, what people find difficult is if they, oh, don't use a water brush. Do not even attempt to do anything with any control with a water brush. For abstract, quick, big, loose, loose sketches, fair enough, you might get away with them. But not if you want to um, have this level of control in your shading. Because they're just too wet. They really are just too wet. So by just using that one colour... We've got all that shading in there, and this is the bud here, kind of a little bit around there. What brush are you using again, please? I am using the number 12, believe it or not, from the, the Sheena brushes. Now, I know they're not available, so any, you don't have to pay a fortune for good brushes. Um, you know, I know that there was some, um, uh, I think there was, uh, was it Rare Earth or Tattered that Lace brushes, I know I've sold them available, but then anything you've got that's a good quality brush, you can use that. So if you haven't got any, get get some investing. Like I say, a, a plain 25 quid for a brush isn't going to make you better at this. It's going to, in fact, a lot of the watercolour brushes, and I'm sure Diane, you'll, you'll back me up on this, the ones that are natural hair or sable, you know, the Kalinsky sable, sable ones, which are very expensive for the really good ones, I mean, super expensive. Um, those are trickier to use for a beginner because they tend to be really soft, the bristles. There's not much resistance there. So um, they're kind of flippity floppity, if you know what I mean. So I'm um, just going around here now, I'm darkening that. Now this is where bits of magenta, by putting this color on first, this is I'm establishing my lightest area and my mid range area. Then we'll go in with magenta. Can I have a time check, camera lady, please? Uh, you could if I could see the time. All right. No, I can't. I look Not at my watch. <gasps> 25 to. Oh, you know what? We might have to regroup later. I'll pick it up a bit. We should be fine. Is this is this teaching you anything? Are you are you learning anything? Is this the kind of are we going are we going okay? Is the pace okay? Everybody happy? We've got a delay at our end, yeah. hence the uh, no noise. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got lots of thumbs up flurrying Excellent. in now. Thank you, guys. And hearts. Cheers, lovely. It's just So then at least, you know, we know. And then, right, so that you see that again, that's as much colour as I want to put on that one. Again, so very light strokes. Maybe catch the edge of a couple of petals so that it looks like it's just tinged with colour. Or oh, it's got a little bit of um, movement in it. Uh, we'll do that one there, but not everywhere. And then, and you can hear little bibbly bobbly noises. It's where the the drawing gum is. Um, if you if your pencil goes over it, okay, you know, don't etch, don't press on so hard that you etch. You move, remove that your drawing gum because we want to leave that on to. Uh, you know, to, to leave the cord white later. So light pressure if you're if you're going over where the, the gum is. And pop a little bit on there. Yvonne says she's learning so much just watching. Oh fantastic Yvonne. Well that's brilliant. That's what we want. The thing is is you know it, it's everything. It's only as good as you know how what to do with it. And as long as you've got a few pointers like the wet cord thing and how little you use, um you know, you, you, you're off and running, aren't you? 
Um, there's going to be some magenta, I think, on, around here. And let's see what we've got there. I've got a bud here. I nearly missed. Gail says she's been catching up on the other videos that you put on. Oh, brilliant, Gail. So you'll find those folks on either the, this page or on the Sheena's Inkets group. We yeah. post to each. Yeah. Brilliant. Cheers, Maria. Yeah, we leave them up there so that you can watch them later. Because we were saying this um, about, you know, paint alongs or craft alongs. And the thing is, is it would be so long and um, not everybody wants to craft along. But all you need to do is just play it back and, and get the stuff ready later. And listen to the theory when I'm doing it here. And this is better. It's actually, you know, this is when I teach workshops. I'd rather tell people and have them show them close up around the desk what I'm doing and why and then go play because then you understand it because you know it's not just a case of repeating it's repeating but knowing why and I think that's that's the difference isn't it this is great because you can just refer back can't you absolutely it's like play it pause paint yeah and this is fun for me because you know what just this is the fun thing. This is what I love to do. Wait till you see when we get onto watercolour pans or tubes. Oh, you'll see how um, how much I like to, we like to collect watercolours. Because this is, this is pleasure. This is not me doing um, something through, um, you know, for stamps that is a different, different thing. This is just playing and colouring, which is therapy for me because we all know how good crafting is. For that purpose and especially at the minute you know having to be aware of uh your your head space um i think it's i think it's a great thing and i think that maybe more people will be getting into crafting at the minute because uh usually you don't have the time to do it but a lot of people have got lots of time they didn't have haven't they at the minute yeah babs is asking if we're going to be putting this on the youtube channel yeah that's down to me yeah, that's the techie, that's me, the technician here. And so if I get time tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow and I'll be popping them all on there. So same, just continuing. Mind you, I'm doing my best to finish it on time. But they're bearing in mind, this is not colour mix, this is one pencil. You know, this is this looks this cool with just one pencil. And what you're learning is how does that varying amount of water is gonna give you all those different values there just just by that. So you don't have to you know, oh god, I was looking at envy. Some of you have got like double layers and things like that. Um, and that's lovely, but you don't have to have loads and loads of colours to make it work. Right, okay. Oh, missed one there, look at that, you see? It's a magic colouring book again, see? If you look and you see some little granular bits, like, oh, little tinker, nearly got away. Right, okay, still going. Got buds down here. And I don't know if I've put any colour on them. Nope, up there. Somebody was asking where can they get the colouring pencils? Um, I got mine online on um, on Amazon, and I know quite a few of you did as well. Um, right, I'm going to pick up some colour now because I know I wet this a little bit. Now I'm thinking in the background this is likely to be a bit darker. Behind the petals, a little bit darker. Oh, look at that, so strong. If that happens and you pick up too much, just wet your brush, dry it again, and then spread the colour out and you've got less colour on that way. Um, a little bit there and I'm just do a little bit in the arm like that a bit darker make it look like it's in the background a bit so you know the thing is is play that's the that's the thing and give yourself permission for the first one or two not to be perfect you know when I teach workshops people are you're always your own worst critic you, and then say next to the person next to you, oh, that's brilliant, I love that. And it was at the same time you're praising the person next to you, they're praising yours and going, oh, I wish mine looked as good as that. 
we just do that don't we so look that's what we've got all that light and shade going on but we can make it better Mm, yeah so my my set i just said would a pack of 12 be enough um yeah because you can mix them start with it see if you like it this is um i mean is this 24 24 but then it doesn't have to be this make derwent are great derwent's really good british company um they're fab so um yeah derwent would derwent also great just look at usually you find people have deals on don't they you know the white ladder. knights is another well white knights do pencils but i haven't got them yet but we've got the watercolors in them uh -huh. they're a great um, really good quality um inexpensive watercolor set when we come to do that the other thing i need to know guys is next sunday would you like more coloring with watercolors this time and then we'll come back to pencils we're not done with pencils by any means we've got plenty of time to be playing here um or would you like to say the court in crystal technique or something different your call so what i'm doing now i'm taking this magenta and i'm going in these dark bits between the between the flowers where i think there's going to be a dark shadow i'm going around like this okay um see there's little bits there where one petal kind of overlaps the other i might even put a little bit of a dark area there where the bud is um yeah just oh look i've got a bit there I didn't blend out oh what am i like and we'll put a little bit up here because there's a bit of card i didn't if you've missed a bit if you put a bit of a um like a, oh, you've missed a, you've come outside the area and there's a white bit just make a petal up and put it in that's the beauty of it you're allowed we can do this so where there's overlap where one petals in front of the other it'll cast a shadow so that's where i'm taking a little bit of magenta and i am popping it behind again light pressure um maybe in there a little bit around there and here don't go too much with this because you you don't want to i'm going to leave that there because the leaves will paint in a sec so now this is going to really pop so make sure you've got and it's really tiny little bits of places to get into so still that large brush but look at that and then you can use a little bit of that color just to drag it out so we'll have a dark bit there and then we'll just circular movements and then pull that out and now see how we've got that pretty shadow going on there we'll have this one because it's coming over the top of that one and we'll darken that a little bit you really start to see a big difference when you get the other little shadow kind of sh bit of shading in there it starts to kind of form it and mold it and we can do more of this we can add a little bit more in the centers of the flowers of the petals of the other ones um this here hardly any water your brush is barely damp if you want to be able to control and i'm going to pull a little bit in there and here a little bit where that petal is overlapping this petal and if you want to soften the edge just water and just little squiggly wigglies around it just to um blend it out what is courting crystal please courting crystal is a cool technique if you haven't done it years ago i did this oh and um when i used to i'll tell you what we need what you need to be able to do that it's a technique using floor polish and um, so people go right yeah i want to know how to make use floor polish for a card because seriously best use of it like i say uh in my book and housework but um yeah you use floor polish and you use your yeah, paints and you use acetate and it looks really cool so there's that technique we can do um for a bit messier and a bit looser and a bit you know less um you know traditional art so you know we can mix it up whatever you want now, i'm going to pick up some on the palette now because i don't want to go in now again with a pencil because i don't know which bits of this card are wet and which bits are dry so i don't want to take the chance so i'm going to go and pick up 
the water just as if I'm using a box of watercolors with that magenta color on it and I can even start doing some little folds in the petals if you've got a bit of shadow going on in the petals so on the white one there was a lot of gray you look at it and you think oh white blossom in actual fact a lot of it you can't you wouldn't paint white but you'd put make it make white look whiter by putting some gray in there and you think oh no that's uh that can't be right but it is study the picture look at the color and, and just break it down and if you're not sure do what i did and take your color swatch to the picture and you go well it is true all right okay how are we doing for time have we got a check no it's me again isn't it quarter two right we might get a chance to do these leaves take that do the center with a little bit of bright green oh oh you do not want that to happen disaster dun, dun, da, da, da. all right yeah you don't want that to happen because that'll break the leads in your pencil right so a little bit more here i'm going to do that a little bit just a tiny little bit can you see how little i'm using here this is just such an economical way to so even if your pencils you know you've invested a bit in getting your pencils the good news is they last ages all right unless okay. you drop them oh, unless you drop them yeah so we've got that going on there now with all that varying kind of color now if i look on my picture again inside there's a really pretty like kind of pale green inside these and yellow so i can put some green in the center which i like i'm going to um bring that out more just a bit of color and then a bit of yellow dots so i'm going to pick excuse me i've got hiccups i'm going to pick this bright bright green here which is light green oh it's oh, a bit of a letdown on it this light green and I'm going to scribble on there because I'm not going to scribble onto the card for this one because I want it to be a little bit um, less. And I'm going to take this other one here, which is earth green, and scribble on there. And this is the earth green will be a colour I'll probably use quite a bit for the leaves as well. So pick up a little bit of this lovely bright green, and I'm just going to dot around part of the centre. Like that. Linda Evans wasn't being very quiet a moment ago. Was she not? Was she no. What's she doing? Was she kicking off? She said, yeah, she was, yeah. Was she? Yeah. Oh, calm down, Linda, man. She said, yeah. Would be very interested to see Court in Crystal! <laughs> she just shouted all, okay? Yeah, in <laughs> Right, Linda, take it, you want Court and Crystal? <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. It's fine. Right, I'm going to take a bit of yellow now. Nice one, Linda. Yeah. See, it worked. Shy Ben's getting out as the sea up north. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm going to take a bit of the yellow as well. Um, can't remember which one it is. I'll have a look. And I'm just going to pop a little bit in here. Now, this looks too much. But what I'm hoping is that my uh, drawing gum has is doing its thing and will work for me. Because when I raise that, I'm hoping I'm going to get some white bits of card showing. So the leaves, the leaves I can do. Right, here's the thing. We'll use that lighter green again, and we'll use this green. And but I'm going to use some red in the leaves as well. So I'm going. Well, you know what? I'm going to use that, don't I? So we'll put some lighter green here, and a bit lighter green there. But I want to leave some white on the card as well. And that'll do there. A bit of there. A little bit here. A bit there. And I'm going to put this darker green more where the shadow is going to be again but again i'm going to go much darker there as well so you see there where that leaf moves over to that over that leaf and this leaf moves over there and then we've got the flower moving over so this is all going to be darker in here um give you a little the bottom there right okay so now I'm going to take my brush again, magic colouring book time. Start with the light green and try and leave a bit of white cord if you can for a highlight. 
don't be worried if you haven't coloured it because that's that's kind of what you want. You don't want to cover everything. Although I have covered just about everything there. But that's okay because we can... If you do do that and you lose some of the white highlight, there's always white gouache, which is a white... Um, in traditional watercolour, you don't use a white paint. The white is the cord, which is why when you see watercolours, it, you know, you've got bits where the artist missed bits out. That's to represent the lightest colour, the lightest area. But if you do lose that and you've you basically coloured everything in which is what you kind of taught to do in school and what you think you would do and you would with other mediums um you can always go back over when you're done with a bit of the opaque white which is called gouache gouache and that will um i'm going to dry that maria if i can and then we're going to put some darker color we're going to use magenta on these as well because that will be reflecting in those leaves what we like for time oh still okay mandy i think we're good we might just get it done just in the nick of time if it's going to be a longer one we'll let you know it might start at 5 30 all right just so we've got a little bit of wiggle time well, dry that leslie's watching from newcastle hi leslie hi your pet not get maria to do a geordie i've been trying to teach her Lorne, yes, sell Geordie and the Geordie passports, all good, but um, yeah, it's not working. So, um, got this, and so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a um, I'm going to use the magenta and I'm going to use the darker green. So, I'm just going to, yeah, let's scribble with the darker green, let's do more in there. I want that darker there and under here, and in there, and in here, and in there. But what I'm also going to do. Is pop some magenta in it now if you with to make leaves look more natural and um, tone the green down the bright clean the, the blossom we want bright but the green you want it muted a little bit um, what you can do is add a bit of red into it oh it's me magenta on the floor okay keep looking at that so I can lean down and get me pencil there it is Randy right. saying do you need another 10 minutes lovely if I can, Mandy, that would be great. If that uh, doesn't put you out too much. Could we have a flurry of hearts for Mandy, please? Yeah. That's really kind. Thank you. Cheers, Mandy. Right, so we'll pop that little bit on there. We've got Kay from California. CA California? Yeah, California, yeah. Yay. Nice. That's where I used to hang out, yeah. Elaine from Chichester. Friends and family in California. Yeah. Wendy in beautiful Bath. Lovely. I've got to take bath. you to Bath, yeah. Or Bath. I'll go to Bath, you go yeah. to Bath. Okay. All right. Wendy, you live there. Has it got an R in it? I know it hasn't in the actual spelling. But does one say it with an R? Bath. Yeah. It's Bath to me. Or is it Bath? It's Bath, isn't it? So what I've done, oh, it's like scone or scone. Don't even go there. Scones are one of the most controversial foods in the UK. It's true. Oh, all kinds of dickles or all kinds of bother does your scone. And you put your cream on first oh, and, then I, yeah. so, your yeah. and then you jam or you jam and then you So you've got, yeah, scone or scone. That's the first bit of contention there. Which one? What? Hello? And then you've got, depending on how you put your, your jam or your cream on. Oh, you know... I've said before, just you don't get this with a tea cake. Tea cakes are no bother. Oh, Mandy came from Bath. Really? Oh, I did not know that. And we've got Bogner Regis in the house too. Hey. Oh, look at that bit. I didn't think he'd that bit. Um, right, can you see how much more natural those leaf, the leaf colour is? Yeah, nice. Now, the good thing is, is that's where the magenta comes in. The good thing is, is that when this is dry if you lose a bit of detail the beauty is in the um pencils you can just draw it back in fine point so um i'm going to make a little bit let's if you're not sure about the twiggy bit now i want to use some raw umber because i want it to be a bit lighter and warmer so i'm gonna go for uh, raw umber so i'm gonna because i can always darken a little bit so i'm just going to do a little bit like that and I'm going to use some of the darker brown, the uh, walnut, and I'm going to do this at the bottom, just to thin, like, I'll put quite a bit on towards the bottom of that twiggy bit. 
Um, good if you could leave a little bit of white somewhere for a highlight here. So just leave a bit of card or a little bit of open area. And then can you see where by putting that dark a bit just at the bottom? And then you can even just extend it a little bit if you want. Now we've got that twiggy bit done. And if you imagine here, I might have a bit of a shadow because that petal's over it. Don't go over now with this because it's wet, remember? You could dry it then scribble on, but instead we can just continue working by just putting a little bit of the black there. And now that looks much better and more natural because it would have a cast shadow there. Um, right, so I haven't done too bad really in the time. Um, we'll erase that now. So hopefully we'll have some lighter. So all you do is rub this away now and you should have some dots in there. And if you've lost them, there's also the white, well, gel pens, not as white as the gouache or gouache, which you can use. But that looks pretty, pretty. Um, let me see if I can find the white gouache. Bear with, talk to yourselves for a minute. Talk to Maria. Maria, you're, you're never quiet. You may as well speak up now. That was your time, Maria. <laughs> speak. That was the time. That was the time. <laughs> right, so this is gouache. And actually, this is a really good one. De La Rowney. Um, I've also got Windsor and Newton. But... Uh, this one's actually better, I think this one. It's more peak. And there's different whites, and the white I'm using here is um, permanent white rather than titanium white. Yep, so so what I'm gonna do, I'll just use that same brush again and I'll pick up a bit of white. And again, you can use the other side of the, just where I've missed those little bits, you can you know where the bits are, where the gouache was. If you want to emphasize them a bit more, go over them with, not the gouache, the um, drawing gum. And if you want to add a little bit more on there, you can almost pick those out. And drawing gum's the same as masking fluid. Absolutely, drawing gum, masking fluid, yeah. I, I switch between what they're called, yeah, the same stuff. Okay. Yeah, okay. So just a little dots with the highlights there and again this is where if you've if you have lost some of the highlights on your petals or your leaves you can go over with a little bit of this to um you know to to put that highlight back all right so i'll show you what i mean with this if you um, see this pet, this leaf up here. If I wanted, if I had gone a bit too much on it, by kind of dry brushing it on, you're going to get a more opaque highlight on it. You can do the same with some of your petals if you want to bring a little highlight on them um, here and there. Don't do everything because it's about it's about the variation. It's about having light and dark shades and different values in there. That's going to make it look better. So you know, if it's all dark, it's no good. If it's all light, it's no good. Um, but this is this wasn't necessary because I think I think I'd managed to keep most of the light. But I just wanted to show you as an option, if that's what you wanted to use a little bit of the the gouache on there to bring that out a little bit. Okay, so she's missed the beginning. So we'll be posting this in yeah, its entirety straight away, straight away yeah. after we've finished. Yeah. So you'll be able to watch it back then. Yeah. And if you've missed a little bit on the. Uh, on that branch you can use it quite thick can you see just a little bit there like that and um, what I'm gonna do we'll see about putting a little vein back in those leaves um, and we want to we want the, this screen here um, you don't want to be too obvious with it just a little bit here and there and we're actually not going to blend that out we're going to leave it this is the beauty of your watercolor pencils and that you can do that so Mandy's off to set up now so don't forget to go and join her once we've finished here yeah absolutely I think we're just about done you know I think that's pretty good wow look at that it's actually seven o'clock and we've done so we did a I hope you enjoyed it I enjoyed it it's lovely you no know, just therapeutic just playing coloring in um, and using a product that you know I haven't reinvented the wheel with watercolor pencils but if you've got them and you don't know the tips and tricks on how to make them work they can look horrible they can not work for you but they're not much to make them work for you 
it's easier than you think. So just before we wrap up, yeah. quick talk on courting crystal, because that seems to be your right. favourite. Courting crystal. So this is what you're going to need for next week, guys. Floor polish. Now, are you, if you can get the Johnson's Clear or Pledge floor polish used to be, that's what you. That's great as well. But I moved on to this one, and um, we got this one at Lakeland, didn't we? We got loads of this, yeah. and um, this works great. So have a look for and what it is. It says floor polish. The Johnson's used to call it a wax. It's not a wax. It's like a a thin. Can you see in there? Thin acrylic liquid. Can you see? Mm -hmm. It's like a white, very very thin acrylic liquid, and um, that's what we're gonna use to use and um, tissues, preferably man size and some water-based colouring product and a stamp and acetate hip assistant but I'll put a list but if you that's the thing that you probably may not have that you could look for for um for next week I hope you enjoyed that I did like I say and um thank you and go go join Mandy now that makes me done wonderfulness on imagination crafts imagination crafts you may have remembered page. yeah Yay. absolutely thanks everybody stay safe Bye, see you next week. Bye.